Hey everyone, welcome. Today we're going over the endocrine system, specifically for those of you who are studying for the TEAS exam or the HESI, it's gonna be the same information. So I just wanna let you know that I do have another video out there that goes over the endocrine system and it goes over it a little bit more in depth and detail and with a little bit of graphics. So let's go ahead and get started. Here, first off, we have the glands and some of the organs like the heart and the pancreas, those aren't glands, they are organs, but these all secrete some hormones. So starting off with the pineal gland, pineal gland releases melatonin. So important about melatonin is that it peaks at night and it causes drowsiness in order to promote sleep. So melatonin basically helps us sleep. Your next gland is your hypothalamus and it's actually gonna release all of these hormones here. Now notice that these all have RH, right? So RH means releasing hormone. Releasing hormone. And what that does is it tells the pituitary gland to release a certain hormone. So for example, thyrotropin releasing hormone is going to tell the pituitary gland to release its thyroid hormone. For example, gonadotropin releasing hormone is going to tell the pituitary gland, hey, it's time to release your gonadotropin type hormones and so on. So your growth hormone also, it's going to tell pituitary gland, hey, it's time to release your growth hormones. So hypothalamus, the most important thing you have to remember is that this has all of your releasing hormones and all of these releasing hormones, the only job that they do is they tell the pituitary gland to release their hormones, okay? So tells the pituitary, specifically it tells the anterior, okay? If you can remember that, specifically anterior pituitary gland to release its hormones. Okay, so next we have our pituitary gland. This secretes prolactin. Prolactin increases or stimulates milk production. So we've got luteinizing hormone. I'm gonna put an H for short for uh, hormone. And this is also called LH. And then we've got follicle stimulating hormone. Follicle stimulating hormone. H for short for hormone. And you can also shorten this as FSH. Okay, so FSH and LH. As far as the TEAS exam goes, you really don't need to know much about what they do. All you have to know is that these two help in the reproductive system or they stimulate um, certain hormones in the reproductive system. So just think reproduction, okay? Reproduction. Next we have adrenocorticotropic hormone, adreno corticotropic hormone and you can also call this ACTH for short. So, so ACTH stimulates steroid secretion from the adrenal glands. Okay, next we have growth hormone and this stimulates cell growth. Cell growth. 
Lastly, we have thyroid stimulating hormone. Thyroid stimulating hormone is going to stimulate the thyroid to release its hormones. So stimulates thyroid to release T3 and T4. T3 and T4. So remember I said that the hypothalamus has these releasing hormones and they tell the pituitary gland to release these hormones. Here's how it works. The growth hormone releasing hormone is going to tell the pituitary gland to release its growth hormone and the growth hormone is going to stimulate cell growth. Corticotropin releasing hormone is going to tell the pituitary gland to release ACTH and then ACTH is going to tell the adrenal glands to release the steroids. Thyroid tropin releasing hormone is going to come down and tell the pituitary gland to release its thyroid stimulating hormone and thyroid stimulating hormone is then going to stimulate the thyroid to release its hormones, which are T3 and T4. Now, gonadotropin is going to come down and tell the luteinizing and the follicle stimulating hormone to release their hormones. These two are also known as gonadotropins, gonadotropins, okay? So the, your gonadotropins are LH and FSH. Remember, they have to do with reproduction. And so gonadotropin releasing hormone is gonna affect your, gonad your gonadotropins. Okay, so that's the relationship between the hypothalamus releasing hormone and the pituitary gland. Now, the pituitary gland, you can also, there's a lot of hormones here that stimulate other hormones to release their hormones. So you can also associate stimulating hormones with the pituitary gland, just like you relate releasing hormones with hypothalamus, relate stimulating hormones with pituitary gland. Okay, by the way guys, all of these are the anterior part of the pituitary gland. Anterior. Anterior means the front, right? And then we've got the posterior part. So posterior, posterior pituitary. Luckily, we only have two glands, I'm sorry, two hormones to remember here. One of them is oxytocin. Oxytocin, and the first thing you should think of when you think of oxytocin is uterine contractions, right? It maintains uterine contractions during childbirth. By the way, uterine contractions, is this because of positive feedback or negative feedback? It's huge. You're going to need to know this. It's part of positive feedback, okay? Positive feedback. Let's go over that really quickly. So we've got negative feedback and we've got positive feedback. The endocrine system generally uses negative feedback. But there are some exceptions, like oxytocin uses positive feedback. Positive feedback is going to enhance or increase whatever stimulation is going on, while negative feedback is going to decrease that whatever stimulation is, is happening. So, for example, oxytocin, part of positive feedback. If you're having uterine contractions, it's a good thing because you're trying to push out the baby, right? So what's gonna happen is the positive feedback loop is gonna say, hey, I need even more contractions because we need to make this, this happen. We need to make this baby push out. So positive is going to enhance the stimulation. The stimulation is 
contractions, uterine contractions. So if we're enhancing the contraction, we're enhancing the stimulation, we're doing positive feedback. Just remember uterine cr contractions are under the control of positive feedback. And oxytocin, you, the, the first thing you should think of is uterine contractions. Now, the second thing you should think of is not as important, but still important, but it causes milk ejection. Milk ejection from the tit. Don't get oxytocin, milk ejection confused with prolactin. Where's prolactin at? Prolactin. So prolactin makes the milk but oxytocin makes that milk come out okay so don't get these confused they have two different jobs but they both deal with milk all right so the other hormone that the posterior pituitary gland excretes is adh adh otherwise known as anti diuretic hormone. So anti-diuretic hormone is going to decrease your urine output, increase your blood volume. And what happens when you increase your blood volume? Well, you increase your blood pressure, right? All right. So I went over this in a last video that I did, basically that triangle between the kidneys and the heart and stuff and how they all regulate the blood pressure. So when you're thinking about blood pressure, antidiuretic hormone ADH is so incredibly important to know. In fact, I'm gonna put a star right here because ADH is like, you gotta know it. You gotta know it for the T's exam. Kidneys. <laughs> okay, ADH, antidiuretic. It decreases your urine output. It does that by retaining, re, I'm sorry, retaining sodium. You know that wherever sodium goes, water follows. So if water's following it, you're retaining water. Where is the water going? It's going to your blood vessels. So it's gonna increase your blood volume and your blood pressure. Okay, so that's about it for the pituitary gland. Remember, it, you have an anterior part of your pituitary gland, which is all this right here. And then you've got your posterior pituitary gland and it's only releasing oxytocin and ADH. Now, I'm gonna erase this because we obviously don't have enough room to go over the hormones here, so I'm gonna erase all this. But I told you I was gonna star um, some of the most important ones, the ones that are mandatory, you gotta know. One of them's ADH. What does it do? It increases your blood pressure, right? Melatonin, you've gotta know this one. I seen questions on both of these from ATI practice exam. Gotta know that one. Gotta know your ACTH, your adrenocorticotropic, okay? And also know your thyroid stimulating hormone. So something about this thyroid stimulating hormone, you don't wanna get it confused with your your thyroid hormones like T3 and T4. It's really important that if you see this on your exam, the fact that it says stimulating right there, you know, it's a stimulating in the middle, is a major clue that it's not coming from your thyroid. It's coming from where? Your pituitary gland, right? Because your pituitary gland, remember I said, you should relate it to all of your stimulating hormones. All of these are stimulating hormones. So if you see stimulating, this isn't coming from your thyroid. It's coming from your pituitary gland. Don't get it tripped up just because it says thyroid, okay? And then over here, thyroid tropin. Don't get that, just because it says thyroid. I know a lot of people are like, oh, thyroid. It comes from the thyroid. No, it doesn't. Make sure you know this one too. This one comes, you're gonna always see RH come after it, okay? And when you see RH, you're gonna have a clue that where does it come from? It comes from your hypothalamus, right? Because all of these hormones are releasing hormones. Okay, so I'm gonna erase all this and then we're gonna go ahead and move on with the thyroid. Okay, so next we've got thyroid. So the thyroid releases triadothyronin, otherwise known as T3. 
how you can remember this is like try, try is three. So think uh, T3. And we've also got thyroxin, just T4. By the way, it's really not important that you memorize how to spell this, but you might see something that says um, this big word right here, triodothyronin. You have to associate it with three, T3, not T4, because you'll get that wrong. So both of these have iodine in them, contain iodine, and they assist in cellular metabolism. Cellular metabolism. So basically, they're controlling how fast and how well your cells are working. Okay, so this next one is equally as, poor, as important but not as well known. Calcitonin. Calcitonin decreases calcium in the bloodstream. Okay, so... Interestingly enough, you don't have to know this, but the way that it decreases calcium in the bloodstream is it causes bone production. So remember where calcium is stored is within your bones. So if you need to build these bones, it's going to use up the calcium in your bloodstream. Next, our parathyroid gland secretes one hormone and it's parathyroid hormone. Parathyroid hormone. Pretty easy to remember. And the one thing that this parathyroid hormone does is it increases blood calcium levels. So increase calcium levels in the bloodstream. So what do you know? This does the opposite of what calcitonin does. Calcitonin decreases calcium in the bloodstream. Parathyroid hormone is going to increase calcium in the bloodstream. I'm gonna tell you something, you really don't need to know this for the T's exam, but I think it's interesting. So we said that calcitonin, the way it decreases calcium in the bloodstream is it's, it does bone production, right? Because for bone building, bone production, you're gonna need some of that calcium and you're gonna take it out of the blood. Well, parathyroid is going to do the exact opposite. It is going to break down your bone to excrete some of that calcium stored in your bone and it's going to take it into the bloodstream. Okay, so next we've got the thymus gland. We're going to put that over here. This secretes one hormone and that is thymosin. So thymosin assists in maturation of white blood cells. So thymosin, white blood cells, white blood cells. What do you relate to white blood cells? Immune, immunity. So you could say that if you see a question regarding thymosin or regarding immunity, I mean, these two are pretty much gonna pair up. Thymosin helps with immunity. Immunity comes from white blood cells, comes from thymosin. You get, you get what I'm saying here? Okay, so next we've got the GI system. Okay, gastrointestinal system. This is going to secrete three things. One is gastrin, two is secretin, Cretin, and three is CCK. So gastrin is going to stimulate hydrochloric acid. Uh, hydrochloric acid or HCl, okay? Gastrin, hydrochloric acid. Secretin and CCK are going to stimulate So secretin and CCK are going to stimulate pan pancreatic enzymes and bile. Now, all three of these are basically going to help with digestion. So they help with digestion and they're found in the 
GI system. Okay, next we've got the heart. Obviously, we don't have room because I write so huge. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, erase this, but also let me go ahead and star all of the hormones that you absolutely, absolutely must know. Of course, you've got to know P3. Of course, you gotta know about T4. These are both released by the thyroid. Remember, don't get them confused with the other hormones that have thyro in them from the pituitary and the uh, hypothalamus. Don't get them confused with those. T3, T4 come from the thyroid. Don't forget about your calcitonin. It's important, but I haven't seen it on the teeth exam um, prep, prep practice questions. So we'll leave that one out. Um, what else? Gastrin. Know that one, secretin, know that one. Okay, so let me go ahead and take this down. Okay, so next we've got the heart. I'm gonna put this up here, okay? So we have room for everything else. This releases A N P. Okay, A N P atrial natriuretic peptides. So this is actually going to increase sodium excretion in the kidneys i've said it before and i'll say it again where sodium goes water follows so if you're excreting meaning you're urinating urinating if you're urinating sodium water's following you're urinating more water right you're urinating more water, you're get, getting more water out of your system, what's gonna happen to your blood volume and blood pressure? Think about it. If you're losing more water through your urine, what is gonna happen to your blood pressure and your blood volume? Decrease in your blood pressure, sorry, your blood volume, and decrease in your blood pressure. Side note, remember blood volume and blood pressure, they go hand in hand. Whichever one you're gonna decrease, the other one is gonna be influenced and also decrease. Vice versa, if you increase your blood volume, you're also gonna increase your blood pressure. So, in short, A and P is going to decrease your blood pressure, decrease your blood volume. By the way, what would cause A and P to be released? Why would your body want to decrease your blood pressure or blood volume. Maybe simply because you have really high blood pressure, right? So this is something naturally that your heart is gonna do in order to maintain your homeostasis. In other words, maintain those balanced levels of, of, of blood volume and blood pressure and heart rate. So definitely no AMP. Okay, next we've got the pancreas. The pancreas is an organ, but it also excretes hormones. It's gonna secrete two hormones, insulin and glucagon. Both of these regulate blood sugar or glucose in the bloodstream. So insulin decrease glucose in the bloodstream. Glucagon is going to do the opposite. Glucagon is going to increase glucose in the bloodstream. Stream. Sorry, can't see more, but it's there. Bloodstream. So, all you got to know is that these two work against each other. Basically, they do the opposite thing. Insulin is going to decrease your glucose and glucagon is going to increase your glucose in your bloodstream. Okay, moving on to the adrenal glands. Okay, so the adrenal glands, I'm going to put it all the way over here. Okay, um, one thing about the adrenal glands, you've got the adrenal cortex and the medulla. Okay, these both excrete different hormones. So we're gonna start with the cortex up here and let's put the medulla down here okay so the cortex is going to release two important hormones the first is 
cortisol, cortisol, and this is going to respond to stress. Stress. It's actually called your stress hormone. So if you get a question that has the word stress in it, likely it's relating to cortisol hormone, okay? The next hormone released by your cortex is aldosterone. Oops. Aldosterone. Okay. Aldosterone is going to increase your blood pressure increase your blood volume and it's gonna do this by you guessed it increasing sodium retention where in the only place we know where right in the kidneys now the medulla is going to release two hormones your epinephrine and your norepinephrine both of these are your fight or flight hormones. To fight or to flight. So they're fight or flight. They're activated when you're ready to fight or take flight, okay? So what they're gonna do is increase metabolic activity. One of the most known things that epinephrine and norepinephrine do is increase your heart rate. Okay, so this is pretty important to remember. Um, anytime any hormone increases or decreases your heart rate or your blood pressure, you know it's going to have a crucial impact to your body. So increase heart rate, epinephrine, norepinephrine, and they come out in fight or flight. Now, let me go ahead and do this really quick. You have to know insulin. You've got to know that insulin and glucagon counteract each other. And you've got to know that they come from the pancreas. Aldosterone, I saw a question about aldosterone on those practice problems. So I would say you definitely got to know that one. And then definitely know your epinephrine, norepinephrine, and know that it comes from your adrenal medulla. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to our adipose tissue and then our gonads, and then we're finished. So your adipose tissue only excretes one hormone that you need to know is called leptin. Leptin causes satiety. So satiety. Satiety means the feeling of fullness. Feeling full. So basically it helps... Um, make you feel full it sends a signal to the brain that says hey this person's full don't overeat so your gonads are referring to in females your ovaries and in males your testes let me write that here so your so your ovaries are going to excrete estrogen and progesterone progesterone and your testes are going to release testosterone now that's not the only thing that your ovaries and testes release they release other stuff too but these are the most important ones that you need to remember so you're going to relate all of these three hormones to secondary sex characteristics Okay, estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. And then I'm just going to put a star. Make sure you know estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. Okay, so that pretty much wraps it up. We went over every single gland and um, organ, like the heart and the pancreas, right? The organ that releases hormones. We went over what those hormones do and that's pretty much it so again this is just a super quick believe it or not this is a quick breakdown of all of the hormones i put a star next to all of the ones you absolutely need to know but i think it honestly would benefit you if you go and check out my other um endocrine video i left the link below 
go check it out because it's a little bit of a slower explanation and also it's it's got a lot of visuals um so i think that would be good also go check out my practice questions i think there are about 20 endocrine practice questions they're very helpful for you if you're taking your teas or your hesse because um i've looked at both books teas and hesse and the endocrine system is alike it's it's the same thing okay so thank you for sticking around you guys until next time